Hi, Cancer, and welcome to your April 2024 horoscope. If you haven't heard, April has a lot going on. <laughs> we have a solar eclipse, we have Mars conjunct Saturn, and we also have Jupiter conjunct Uranus, which, by the way, happens once every 14 years. So it's definitely a big event. But let's get into the day by day of the month so that you have a little bit more details on what you can expect. On April 3rd, Venus conjuncts Neptune in your ninth house. It's a really beautiful day to have Venus and Neptune conjunct together. It might give the day this loving and gentle energy, compassionate energy. And for you especially, Cancer, it might manifest as beautiful travels that you're taking or perhaps that you have found the right education program to pursue uh, that's really aligned with your higher ambitions. Be careful if you're traveling not to put yourself in dangerous situations. Sometimes with Venus and Neptune conjunct together, we can be quite, again, compassionate, trusting, very open. and it might be harder to be skeptical of others or to question others, to set boundaries. So again, just make sure you uh, don't look at things too rosy so that you put yourself in any dangerous situations. On April 5th, Venus enters Aries or your 10th house and it sextiles Pluto in your 8th house. So I did a really extensive live on Pluto through each of the houses. So if you want to really dive into that, then I'll leave the video right here and you can check it out. However, the sort of too quick or too long didn't read the TLDR uh, on Pluto in your eighth house is you're really learning on finding your power through intimacy and relying on others really realizing that there's a beautiful power that comes out of being vulnerable and honest with others. And the fact that Venus in your 10th house is having this conversation with Pluto, I really see it as you spending more time and attention in your career, you're really valuing it. And as a result, the things you're learning there are helping you understand this lesson of connection and reliance on others and being intimately connected and vulnerable with others as well. On April 8th, there's a solar eclipse in your 10th house in the sign of Aries. So the solar eclipse is a new moon and that means that both the sun and the moon are in Aries in your 10th house. The sun and the moon are in the decan, which is ruled by the sun. So it could be that you are taking actions or decisions during the eclipse that are motivated by your ego. So just take some time to reflect so that you don't make any permanent decisions that just a couple of days later you might not uh, agree with anymore. And I usually don't talk about Mercury in these horoscopes because it moves quite fast. So usually the um, changes or effects it brings into our lives are not super like earth shattering or very deep and meaningful. But I do think it's good to mention that during this solar eclipse, Mercury is in retrograde. So especially, you know, if you uh, have a higher likelihood to act from your ego and Mercury is in retrograde, I really see this as a recipe for disaster for us not thinking through what we're saying, acting out of a hurt ego saying things that we uh, that are harsh, that we don't really agree with or believe in. And as a result, the other person also misinterpreting them, taking them really seriously and not having an impact on uh, our relationship. On April 10th, Mars is conjunct Saturn in your ninth house. So this can manifest a couple of ways for you, Cancer. Perhaps you have some really great ideas on places you want to travel or education you want to pursue, or maybe even some great ideas on how you can continue to evolve as a person with your values and with your morals. But 
they they might feel like they are facing a wall, they're coming to a halt, and they can't go any further. Because this is the energy that Saturn is bringing to this day. Keep in mind, Saturn likes to make it look like there's a wall in front of us, but sometimes you know, often we can still get to our destinations still. We just might need to find a different way to, to get to our destination. On April 17th, Venus is conjunct the North Node in your 10th house. So Venus, during the solar eclipse on the 8th, was quite close by, it was in the sign of Aries. But since then, it has kept moving closer and closer to the nodes where the earlier eclipse took place. So I really see Venus touching the nodes again as a moment to reflect on what happened during the eclipse. Sometimes eclipses can feel quite emotionally charged and we might not be able to take a moment to reflect on what's happening and what this means for us. So I do think that this is a beautiful day to do that. There might be a little bit less emotion around whatever happened with the eclipse. So you might be able to uh, finally reflect in, um, in a way that's less emotionally charged and you're able to sort of see what that situation was trying to teach you. On April 20th, we have the big event. We have the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. And for you, Cancer, it's happening in your 11th house. As I said earlier, Jupiter and Uranus are only conjunct once every 14 years. If you want, you could look back to the types of feelings and things you were facing 14 years ago when they were conjunct. Uh, but keep in mind that they were probably conjunct in a different sign and in a different house. So even though the energy might be the same, it could have manifested in a different area back then uh, from in the area that it would manifest today on, on the 20th of April. For you specifically, Cancer, because it's happening in your 11th house, it's surrounding your friends and your community. So you've had Jupiter in your 11th house for about a year. Perhaps you've been finding it super easy to make friends, to meet influential people, uh, to grow your community. Perhaps you all of a sudden have a crap ton of friends to hang out with all the time. But also keep in mind Uranus has been in your 11th house for much, much longer than Jupiter has. Um, and what Uranus in your 11th house might have been doing is bringing a lot of ups and downs, a lot of highs and lows with your friends. You know, days where you feel like, wow, I love this group of people and I would, you know, I would give the clothes off my back for them. And other days where maybe you experience a little bit of the, you know, um, nature of, of your friends that is not so nice to deal with or that maybe is a little bit selfish and and only caring for themselves and and not returning the the caring nature towards you so during the mars and uranus conjunction it's like they're sitting together for coffee and they're each telling each other's story and it's a moment for each of them to reflect on what are they actually learning what are you learning uh, with all of the highs and lows, the good parts and the bad parts that you've experienced with your community and with your friends? So it could be a day where you can really come to some powerful realizations. On April 20th, the sun also enters Taurus, so that uh, does add more to that Taurian energy. A day later on the 21st, the sun is um, just like a degree more into Taurus. And because of that, it squares Pluto in your eighth house. I really see the square as the opportunity to keep learning the Plutonian lessons. Um, so all of the things that are happening with your friends group, the attention and time that you put into it will keep highlighting to you uh, why it's important to have close and deep connections, why it's important to have people near you that you're super vulnerable and, and honest with. And it might not be... Um, an easy realization or easy sort of helping each other because again, again, it's a square aspect between the sun and Pluto. Uh, so it might be almost like you thought you knew what it really means to be vulnerable and, and close to somebody. And then something happens in your friendship group that really jolts that and, and makes you realize like, okay, something needs to be adjusted. And I, 
I need to approach this in a different way. On the 24th of April, we have a full moon in Scorpio. So the sun is in Taurus in your 11th house and the moon is in Scorpio in your 5th house. A full moon can bring insights because the sun is literally shining a light on the moon, revealing parts that were perhaps hidden to us previously. And for you specifically, the sun is revealing insights around how you have fun, the ways that you get in touch with your inner child and allow yourself to play. Perhaps during this full moon, you're presented with an opportunity that is a lot of fun and uh, perhaps something that feels really joyful, really indulgent, and, and almost has no purpose besides you just having fun. On April 28th, Mars is conjunct Neptune in your ninth house. Mars conjunct Neptune is actually such a beautiful aspect again. Mars is the planet of action and Neptune is this lofty spiritual connection um, and ideals. So it's almost as if you're taking actions during this day that are for the higher good of humanity, that allow you to act in a spiritual way, to show up in a spiritual way, maybe support others as well. And, you know, Cancer, this is in your ninth house. So maybe you're deciding to travel to a place that will help you get in touch with your spirituality better. You know, maybe you're booking your meditation retreat. But it could also be that you're picking up some more spiritual studies as well. Or maybe even that you are shifting your belief system, your morals, your values to be a little bit more idealistic and more focused towards the rest of humanity and not just towards yourself. We close off the month on April 30th with both Venus and Mars returning to their homes. So Venus is returning to Taurus and Mars is returning to Aries. And it's almost as if you can take a sigh of relief at the end of the month. After crazy April, the end of the month might feel like a breath of fresh air and like, okay, maybe things are not upside down anymore. Maybe things are slowly the right way up. And it might feel easier now to express yourself. It might feel a bit more natural to express your anger as well as your more uh, loving emotions as well. So overall cancer, there's a lot of focus in April on your ninth and 10th house. There could be things happening in your career that are really asking you to look out for yourself and to stand up and follow your instincts. And then again, uh, you might be doing a lot of traveling this month or maybe even traveling with your beliefs. <laughs> if you're not traveling physically, at least you're traveling in a way that you're exploring um, what it is that you actually believe in, what lifestyle do you want to live, and just being really open um, and reflective on, yeah, on where you see yourself going. So thank you so much for joining me, Cancer, for this horoscope. Let me know in the comments which transit you're the most excited about in April. I would be uh, happy to hear from you. And I hope to see you for the May horoscope as well. If you want to make sure you catch that one when it comes out, then make sure you subscribe. I hope to see you again soon.